Welcome, this is Teresa Litchfield. Today I'm sharing three different ways to create some really pretty pattern backgrounds with some of the products from Alta News November 21 Sparkle and Shine collection. There are so many new amazing products including two new ink collections in this release so stay tuned till the end for a look at those. Let's get started with this card which looks complicated but it's really easy layering. It features the new fancy star builder, stamp set and coloring stencil. There are so many options to layer with this set that the hardest thing about it is choosing what pattern you're going to create. The inspiration guide that comes with it is super helpful for that. And here's the stencil that you can use to color the images and coordinate with the stamps. You can also use the positive pieces for a mask. So this is a five and a half by four and a quarter and I'm gonna use the transparency grid from Simon Says Stamp uh, to create the pattern. This will help me place things straight. Now I'm gonna create a symmetrical pattern, but you could also use a ruler and you're gonna draw a line, uh, a ho one horizontal, one vertical, and then two diagonal ones. And they're all gonna intersect in the middle. I'll start out with this stamp and I'll put that on the grid just in one of the um, sections um, to start off as a base. So I'll put that in my MISTI and then I can remove that transparency. And I'm going to use the Glacier Caves uh, ink set and start out with the Persian Blue. And I stamp that and then I can turn my paper um, uh, a half a turn to the other side and I can keep my stamp there and I'm just going to line up that grid again just to make sure it lines up right. So now I can remove that grid and stamp the other side. If you decide you want to use a ruler, um, use a pencil really lightly like I'm doing here. I'm just marking the corner where I started from so I have a starting place. And then I can turn it back around and replace that grid. And again, if you use a uh, pencil, just make it light so you can erase them again. So I took the um, stamp off and I'm putting it on the other um, the other side, the right top side, and stamping that. And then I can turn my cardstock again and again stamp the other side of it. So now I'll have all four of those stamped for my base layer. And after I'm done doing that, I'll use the stencil with an image that coordinates with the stamp. I'll also use a lighter ink so it doesn't disrupt the color of the blue. I'll use the Sunset Red ink family and to start with, the, I'll use the blush ink with this stencil layer and a small blending tool. I'm using a little bit of post-it tape to mask off the other open areas of the stencil and hold it down. And I'll just move the stencil and ink up all four areas. The stencil makes it really handy to add some quick ink blending uh, for additional layers with this design. And here's a little look at that. Next I'm going to use the smaller version of the first stamp I used and I'll place the points in between the points of the larger one. I'll use Caribbean Sky Ink on this layer and I'll stamp all four of the images the same way I did the first stamp, repeating the process of stamping and then I'll turn the cardstock stamp the other side and then I'll remove that stamp and place it in the upper right corner stamp that and then I can turn the cardstock the last time and I'll stamp the final image I'll turn my cardstock so my pencil mark is back at the starting point and then I'm going to use this stamp and I'll place that in the um, lower right hand corner and I'll use the sapphire ink and I'm only going to stamp this one turn. So I'm going to stamp it here, turn one more time, and stamp it in the diagonal corner. I'm going to do a different image on the other sides. This is the most beautiful navy blue ink. I'll use this stamp next, which is kind of an outline to the stencil pattern I used. And I'll use cotton candy ink with this stamp, and I'll stamp it on the other two. And again, I'll flip that cardstock and stamp the other side. I'm going to use this stamp now on the same side as well um, with the sapphire ink again. I just want to balance everything out with that really dark ink. And again, flip it and then stamp it on the other side. 
I used the little dot stamps on an acrylic block with the Caribbean Sky ink to embellish around the two big stars. I thought it would add some of the enamel dots from the Glacier Cave set that coordinate with the Blue Ink family. So you can see how I'm building up the pattern with a lot of the stamps and stencils in the set and I'm adding some dimension with the enamel dots. I know it seems like I just don't know when to stop but I'm going to use this dot with the rouge ink and I'm going to go around those other two circles. And I just start filling the spaces in around that and I didn't really know what I wanted to do so I filled a few in and then just decided to fill all the spaces in. And I'll do that around both of them. I promise this is the last image I'm going to use. I'll use this one from the stencil with the Arctic ink. And I just added some posted tape and I'm going to move it around to all the corners and the center. And that'll just help connect that pattern. I told you it was super easy just to keep going with this. It's really addictive. Um, you just want to keep adding pattern on top of pattern. But it's really fun and like I said it's super easy to do. It just is a little more time consuming depending on what um, design you choose. And now you have your own custom colored uh, background for whatever occasion you need. To finish the card, I cut it down to 5 and a quarter by 4 and added it to a navy blue A2 size panel. The sentiment comes from the set and I white hand embossed it on navy cardstock and layered three more strips underneath for a dimension. I also decided to add the star die cut from the stunning star flower die set uh, which I'll use later on in the video again. But I pressed a white die cut into embossing ink and heat embossed it with translucent pearl embossing powder. I was really excited about this set and just felt it was really versatile for a feminine or a masculine cards. The next card is the most quick and easy of the three because it uses one large background stamp, but I'm going to step it up a bit by adding some more design to it. This is the Illusion Diamonds background stamp set. I love the sentiments and the font style and I can see I'll be using those a lot. I really like the simplicity of the ideas in the inspiration guide and I actually base some of my ideas for these cards after seeing it. I'm placing an A2 size card panel in the center of my Misty, so I have lots of room for the stamp and I feel like I get better pressure with it in the center there. I'll use Arctic Ink to stamp with this after I've conditioned it and I'll use my um, stamping tool so I can really get good pressure. I'm running through this pretty fast but I wanted to show how I stamped it with the ink four times. I love this color and wanted it a bit darker and really wanted to show the pattern in the stamp. I cut the stamped panel down to five and a quarter by four and then I'm going to take two of my rectangle dies uh, which leaves a half an inch border around the edge and I take those together and onto the panel and then I run that through my die cut machine. So you're left with three pieces and that quarter of an inch frame that the dies make I'll save for later for another card. I'm going to pop both of those pieces up on another white cardstock panel uh, with some of the instant dimension foam tape. I know I go a little bit overboard with the tape, I just feel like that makes it more sturdy. After I remove the release tape, one trick I like to use is to add glue on top of the tape so it has some slip and you can wiggle it into place. So I'll apply the outside frame first, leaving a quarter of an inch of a border. And then I can apply the center using the same technique with the glue on the tape. It really helps when you're trying to get something in a precise place. And then that will leave that quarter of an inch cut out in the design. I took a couple more of the rectangle dies and cut a gray blue to match the ink color and a white cardstock piece um, to add my sentiment to. So I'm going to use the Hello from the set and the Sapphire uh, Mixed Media ink. I love to use this ink because then I don't have to use uh, embossing ink. And I can just use clear embossing powder over the top of that. And I also stacked a couple more um, under the white just to give some more dimension to it and glue those together. I glued the sentiment panel to the center of the card and then the finished card front to a top folding card base. I absolutely love the clean look of this card and it would make really great card set to even give as a gift. So I had to make another card that shows what a great set this would make and I slightly changed things up. 
Here's a look at that card, and I won't show the whole process again. I'll just go over some of the details that I changed. I used the blush ink on the Illusion Diamond stamp, and again stamped it the four times. Um, I then used the gray denim ink for the sentiment and heat embossed it with clear. I used the fine frames cover die as the border and I always cut this with the double sided adhesive sheets. I just think with the look and the sentiments it's perfect for sets and of course these are my favorite colors but that's what's so great about making your own cards is to give them your personality. My third example shows how to use multiple die cuts to create a pattern background, and it's usually more pleasing to the eye to use an odd number of images. I'm using the Stunning Starflower Layering Stamp Set and Dies, and again it has that great idea on layering guide that it comes with. There are two different star flowers in the set, and there are no leaf stamps. The leaves are in the die set with the um, star word. Um, but the, also the leaves, when you cut them out, they're embossed as well. And that star word is great because there are a lot of um, sentiments in the stamp set that go with that. I've got a big enough piece of cardstock in my Misty to stamp both of the flowers at the same time and multiples of them. And I have a variety of pink inks that I plan to use. I'll go from light to dark and I'll start out with the blush ink. And just as a reminder, I usually do stamp a couple times, especially when it's a light color like this and it's the base layer. So now I'm going to flip that um, cardstock around and I'll stamp them on the other side. I'll take that out and put another piece of cardstock in the Misty and do the same thing. I'm going to end up with eight flowers, so I'll have a lot to play with and I'm sure I'll have some left over for another card. I'll clean those stamps and then place the uh, second layer for both flowers um, on the Misty and I'll use the Rouge ink on the second layer. The inks are really going to start to brighten up the flowers and I really like the set for the layering. Uh, it's really easy to line those stamps up. I'll switch again to my second piece of cardstock and stamp those. I'll line up the third layer of the flower for both and I'll stamp it with cotton candy ink. This color of ink is going to give a bit of a color shift to the flower from a warmer to a cooler pink. Moving on to the fourth layer, I stamped it with Coral Bliss ink and it just ended up looking too red so I stamped over it with Pinkalicious ink which I liked much better but I think I was so distracted I forgot to film it. As I'm adding the fifth layer, you can really see how the pinkalicious really made that pink pop and I'll use the rubellite on the fifth layer to deepen the center. I had a color thing going and really wanted to stay with the pinks. So, I, you know, it's fun to kind of see what happens when you stamp over another color and make your own color out of it. For the sixth layer in the center, I'm going to heat emboss that. So I'll use my anti-static powder tool and embossing ink and heat emboss it with antique gold embossing powder. And I actually stamped and embossed it twice to get a lot of texture out of it. I'll cut everything out with the coordinating dies and I'm going to cut quite a few leaves so I can play with the arrangement. I'll use a 6x6 size uh, blue gray cardstock with a simple frame embossing folder and I'll also use the coordinating mask stencil after I'm done embossing my cardstock. I'm also going to color the inside of the folder with Arctic ink and I'll apply that to the flat side of the folder with kind of a pouncing motion. You can lightly rub it as long as you don't push the ink into the valleys where you may not want it. I then take a small blending tool and just soften out any harsh lines that I may have made. Now I'll use some temporary adhesive and cover the mask over the embossed frame. I thought it would be fun to um, do some light splatters with the uh, Caribbean Sky Mix Mini ink. And I really don't want these to stand out a lot. I just want it to add a bit more texture to the ink background. So I add some water to that and just lightly splatter again with a, a paintbrush. I really like that there's a mask stencil for this folder and love the effect with the colored cardstock and the inking. I'm using a little bit of hunter green ink and a small blending tool to shade the uh, leaves. And then I've arranged everything on the embossed panel that I cut to an A2 size. And then I'm saving it by adding a piece of present seal onto it. 
And now I can remove it and I can add my adhesive and put it back onto the panel. I cut the word star out of navy blue cardstock three times and stacked it. And then I'm just placing it in that open spot. I'm going to add a little bit of the um, glitter gloss shimmer pen to that. And then I'll add some glossy accents. I got to keep within theme and add a little sparkle and shine. And here's the finished card. I loved using the products in this release and I hope I gave you some inspiration in creating different pattern backgrounds for your projects. This could also easily be adjusted to use on a scrapbook page as well. I have all the products listed in the description below. And as I promised, here's a look at the two new ink sets using the In the Woodland Stamp Stencil and Die Set. The first set of light inks are a level 0 and the second set here is a level 5, which both of the sets complement the existing ink families that Altenew carries. I also have more photos of these on my blog post for this release. I truly appreciate your um, time spent with me today and I hope you'll try some of the techniques I used. I have a couple more videos here at the end that you might enjoy as well. And thank you again and I hope you have a great day doing something you love.